on the festive road, a neighbour was having a heated debate with his wife. A pan flew through the open window and bounced off his head and disappeared down the street. Mr Clegg decided it was a nice day for an adventure, so he left his house and headed for the high street. Hmm, thought Mr Clegg. If only there was something I could do to help this country's poor people. He stood outside the costume shop for a moment and then went in. Mr Clegg browsed through the fancy costumes. What should he try today? The deep sea diver, the cowboy or the Jehovah's Witness? Each had its own merits. As if by magic, the shopkeeper appeared. Do you see anything that you like? said the shopkeeper. Why yes, started Mr Clegg. I feel I need to make a contribution to this country. Just this morning I saw I have something already in the changing room, sir, the shopkeeper quickly interjected. Just step this way. Mr Clegg changed into his costume. He looked around for the door that might lead to a new adventure. Then, he walked through with his head held high. Good afternoon, Mr Clegg said the smarmy looking statesman. My name is Mr Cameron and I'm having a party. Would you like to join us? Mr Clegg thought this might be fun and agreed. You're my newest best friend Mr Clegg. I'll let you carry my briefcase, tie my shoelaces and wipe my bottom when I've done number twos, added Mr Cameron as they walked into number ten. Mr Cameron asks Mr Clegg to invite all his friends to join the party. Mr Clegg happily picks up the telephone in the hallway. Don't call them on that phone, man. It will cost me, uh, I mean, the general taxpayer, lots of money. Use your own mobile phone, said Mr Cameron angrily. Mr Clegg felt a little scared, but obliged. Help yourself to the buffet, Mr Clegg, offered Mr Cameron. The cakes, the Battenberg and the jelly are reserved for the VIPs but have as many pretzels and Bombay mix as you can manage. The feast of goodies was laid before Mr Clegg. He'd never seen so many exotic delights and decided to ask Mr Cameron just how he could afford all of this. Just how can you afford all of this? Mr Cameron laughed his well-worn socks off. Ha ha ha, he guffawed. By raising the VAT on luxury goods to 20%, increasing the cost of education at colleges and universities, Reducing the money we give away to teenagers who stay on in sixth form. My, what else is there? Reducing our armed forces, our doctors and nurses, and making people work until they're older, while paying more into a pension fund they just won't live to see. Now then, my dear Mr Clegg, don't just stand there. Do offer the drinks around. Mr Clegg mingled with the guests, offering wine and unappreciated social comment. He became very unhappy. Just then... <laughs> Bloody hooligan commoners, shouted an angry Mr Cameron. Looks like a crowd of students and anti-capitalist taxpayers. They'll pay for the damage they've done. George, George, make a note. Increase tax, increase tuition fees, raise petrol by 3p. Mr Clegg tried to calm Mr Cameron, but Mr Cameron just wasn't listening. In a shocked daze, Mr Clegg tries to find a way out of the party. He heads towards a green door when suddenly, as if by magic again, the shopkeeper appears. Perhaps it would be best for everyone if you leave right now, Mr Clegg, the shopkeeper insisted, and reiterated, leave right now, he beckoned to the green door. As he stepped back into the changing room, Mr Clegg was thinking that perhaps an adventure in politics was beyond his expectations. Mr Clegg stood in the centre of the changing room. I know, he said. I've thought of the perfect costume with which to cheer the good people of this country. And with that, Mr Clegg started to change. A smartly dressed young man with shadowy eyes and a wobbly mouth approached Mr Clegg. Good day to you, Mr Clegg. My name is Mr Milliband, the younger. I'd like to offer you a job. Mr Clegg's ears pricked up. It seems his new adventure was about to start. 
Yes, I have a party that needs some entertaining, and you look just the part, said the man, chuckling quietly. No, thank you, replied Mr. Clegg. Do you think I look stupid? <laughs> This looks interesting. This man's not for turning. Not too many times anyway. <laughs>